What's going on YouTube? So I'm Chad. Um, you know, this is going to be kind of a hard video to make and, um, you know, a little different than uh, videos I've made in the past. So um, I'm going to get to it. So this is my COVID story that kind of ended up me getting COVID. Um, ended up actually breaking my relationship up with uh, my girlfriend. So I had contracted COVID July 3rd of this year um, and you know my symptoms I first noticed I was really tired um, like not just like oh I haven't slept in a few days like I'm fucking exhausted you know um, and then I had like a minor cough but anyways I ended up getting tested um, and it turns out I had COVID. Um, so at the time uh, I had an apartment with my ex-girlfriend who also happens to be the mother of my child and our daughter <clears throat> yeah so we were living together um, you know I thought it was best that the, uh, they should stay elsewhere um, just in the meantime till I had recovered from getting COVID like most people you know would think um, so I ended up getting them a hotel room um, they were there for about five to six nights and um, my ex ended up getting COVID, quotation marks. We'll get into that later. Um, so she ended up getting COVID. Um, thought it was best that uh, my parents came and picked up our daughter, so my parents did. And from then on out, she had checked out of the hotel room and then it said she was gonna stay in Miami where we're from and uh, stay with friends. So I was cool with that, you know. Um, not really cool with it, but uh, because I figured if you have COVID, you shouldn't really be around anybody. Um, but I was fine with it, you know, if that's what she wanted to do. She's a grown woman, um, so yeah, um, she stayed with friends, and then from uh, a couple days had passed, and then she said that she was going to go to Key West as like a little mini vacation getaway, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I said, That's fine, you know, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Um, she was gone. She was gone for a total of five or six weeks, and um, you know she's somebody that I, I've known for a very, very long time. And you know we always stay in contact, text, you know, call, whatever. And um, I just found it weird that I didn't really hear from her. Um, I heard from her very sporadically, maybe every couple days. And whenever I did hear from her, you know, uh, you can just tell when you speak to someone that something is off. And, you know, I kind of got that tone from her. Um, so, you know, a couple weeks pass by, I'm hearing from her sporadically. And um, I really don't like doing this because, you know, you shouldn't have to do this in a relationship. But I thought something fishy was going on. So um, I ended up making a fake Instagram account. And um, from there, it turns out that she was with her ex-girlfriend um, that she had dated a year or two before we had broken up um, that I knew about but I didn't think that she was still um, low-key going behind my back and talking to so she had flown to Colorado for five to six weeks um, you know I had called her out on it um, and she had pretty much said that it was my fault that she had went to Colorado which I think it's crazy, uh, I didn't make anyone book an airplane flight and go to Colorado, but, you know, uh, a lot of women like to play the victim card, so I get it, you know, it's a lot of the time it's female nature to do that. Um, so, she ends up coming back a few days later after me finding out, comes back to our apartment, says, hey, you know, like, I don't want to be with you, I want to be with this woman, this woman, you have to pack yourself up and leave. And I thought that that was crazy to me to make such a rash and big decision like that. You know, like we have a kid together and um, I was paying all the rent <laughs> and my name was on the place. But I said, you know what, that's fine. I'll, I'll pack up my stuff and leave. Um, within like the week, I would go back and forth, you know, trying to talk to her, trying to convince her about, you know, not to leave me, even though she really fucked me over, which is, looking back at it, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, uh, August 20th, I went back to our place for the final time, and I had noticed that our house was like, our apartment was like cleared out, 
TVs were gone, everything. And um, in that time frame, she had moved her sister into my room, unbeknownst to me. Um, and her sister knew nothing about it. She knew about it, but she didn't want to say anything, rat her sister out. <clears throat> so her mom's boyfriend ends up calling me and says, hey, I feel really bad about what had happened, and I want to tell you what's going on. I said, what do you mean? He's like, she packed up all of her stuff, um, took her mom's car, bought her mom's car, and moved to Colorado and took your daughter. You know, it was crazy. I, I was very pissed off. Um, I felt very disrespected. I've done a lot for this woman, and she never told me, not once, that she was ever going to take my daughter. So I end up calling her, and she pretty much says, oh, I don't love you. I don't want to be with you. I want to be with this woman. Um, you know, I questioned her on why she wasn't honest about anything. You know, why she used me, she said she had no other options at the time. Keep in mind, I've known this chick for eight fucking years. And, um, so now, you know, I'm in the middle of a custody battle, which I really don't want to do. But, you know, um, unfortunately, this is somebody who wants to control everything. Um, she doesn't see me as my child's father, and she just wants to call the shots. So now I'm in a custody battle and I'm awaiting trial to go to court. So it's a really fucked up situation. Um, but you know, I just hope everything works out for me. And um, so yeah, that's my COVID story. You know, it's crazy how, you know, had I not gotten COVID, maybe this wouldn't have happened or, you know, maybe years down the road it would have happened. So that's my story.